Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the updated PCB board for the Despi Pro. So let's get started. Now, if you guys haven't seen the video on me reviewing the Despi Pro, I will leave a link on the top left also in the description below. Now, I hear from my sources that a lot of you guys also been receiving the updated board as well. And that's what we're going to be talking about. The updates, the fixes, the issues, all that stuff in this video. Now, to begin, at first look, they did change slightly on the design factor. It's gotten a little bit smaller and they finally made the little carve out for the heat sink. That was slightly an issue on the previous board where it was actually hitting the PCB board itself and they kind of like grinded it down a little just for it to fit. But on the new updated board, they have plenty of room and it fits perfectly fine. And they, again, they also made the board slightly smaller. Now, a couple of issues that they were facing, one was a major one where it wasn't able to detect all the SSDs. I actually ran into this issue, but I didn't know it was an issue at that time. So I have three SSDs and one of them did not work on the board. So I just chalked it up as the SSD not working itself. But now I found out that it's actually not the problem. It's the problem with the board itself not being able to read the certain serial number off the SSD. Now I did test the new version with the SSD that did not work on version one and it worked perfectly fine. That shows that all the issues regards to that is resolved. Now, the second issue that they were saying is that they were having Wi-Fi connectivity issues uh, due to electric magnetic interference. And they have actually fixed that by shielding the certain components that actually give off the feedback. Now, I don't really use this with a Wi-Fi standard. Uh, most of the time when I have this board connected, I am using Ethernet, so I don't have much experience with the Wi-Fi. But when I did test it, it was about 10 dB difference between the first board and the second board, which is not huge, but enough to make an impact. So uh, yeah, they did fix that issue, which I wasn't really finding to be an issue myself. Next up, they also fixed the HDMI connectivity issue. I did not experience any of that. Uh, all my monitors that I plug in, anything that I plugged in through the HDMI worked perfectly fine. So I don't know exactly what the issue was with the HDMI, but supposedly they resolved it. Maybe a connector issue, I'm not too sure. Last but not least, uh, they were saying that some of the USB interfaces that they were connecting, like mouse and keyboard, was having connectivity issues with the board itself, mainly through the two ports in the front. Now, I actually chalked this whole thing up to probably they changed the USB module, the one that actually connects all the USB uh, connections through the SSD and all that stuff. I, I believe that they changed that, updated that, and resolved all these issues as far as the USB connectivity and the SSD. So whatever they've done with the board, and all the issues that they had before pretty much resolved. Now, I did not run into any keyboard and mouse issues on my course. I actually only used two different keyboards on this and they both worked fine. So if you guys are experiencing that, uh, let me know down in the comments below as far as the mouse connectivity issues. Now, as far as updates go, they actually updated the plug for the fan. So the fan actually has a better plug to it compared to what it was using before. And also now they added the ability to always power on. That actually changes a lot of things I do with this because when you lose power to this, or when you turn it off, unplug it and plug it back in, it won't automatically just power on. It will actually require you to press the power button. But now they actually have this feature where you could just set the jumper and when you plug in the power, it will power on automatically. And that's something I like on this because that's what I mainly think about when I plug in a Raspberry Pi that will just automatically turn on. But now having the ability to have that option um, solves a lot of things. And that is about it as far as um, the updated board itself. Um, there was a lot of issues that were resolved. Uh, minor changes to a PCB board. And if you guys want me to test anything specific with this new board, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.